morning everyone this video is going to look a little bit different this is my desk this is where i work and right in front of you what you can see here this is my molecular model kit what we're going to do is i'm going to use this molecular model kit to show you why skeleton reactions and word equations to show you why those two are limited in the sense that they don't totally represent what's going on at a chemical level and what we're going to do is we're going to focus on that reaction that we looked at last time with the two diatomic elements and the two diatomic elements that we had reacting together where we had nitrogen, but we said nitrogen's diatomic, and so it needs a buddy, and so we have two nitrogen atoms, or this would be N2, over on this side here. And so my nitrogens will be represented in blue, and then we said that, that was reacting with oxygen, and in this case, I'm gonna make oxygen black. And we also had said that oxygen was diatomic and needed to be represented with two atoms. So one, two oxygen atoms, one, two nitrogen atoms, and what that ended up forming was we ended up forming a NO2. We ended up forming an NO2. Like such. And so this generally is what the reaction looked like. We had a nitrogen, the N2, and the oxygen, the O2, reacting together to eventually form NO2. And what you'll notice is if I put my hand right in the middle of this here, these two sides, these two sides are not equal to one another. And that is a problem. If we're operating by the law of conservation of matter, um, which is one of the fundamental laws of the universe, the number of things on this side over here, the number of atoms of both blue nitrogen and black oxygen needs to be exactly equal to the number of atoms on this side. We cannot create or destroy. As you can see, we've lost somewhere in this process one of the nitrogen atoms. We cannot create or destroy one of these nitrogen atoms. There needs, if there's two here, there also needs to be two on this side as well. And so what that means is, well, the only way that I could do this is I could have a nitrogen atom floating around like this, but that's not how this chemical reaction is going to work. Nitrogen isn't gonna simply float by itself. We said nitrogen was unstable because it's a diatomic element and it wants to exist with another nitrogen. So the only option, if this nitrogen atom, which came from here, is really floating around in there, it's going to react with some more oxygen. Because likely, there's more than just one O2 present. And so what we would see then is that, in fact, it would. It would react with one of the other oxygens. And then, our products would end up looking like this, where we'd have two NO2s produced. But that doesn't work either, because now, we have an uneven number of oxygens on both sides. On, on this side here, we have four oxygens. There's one, two, three, four black balls, two blue balls. And if we go to the other side, we have two blue balls, which is fine. That means that there's an equal number on both sides, but we only have two of these. And so what that means is, well, my only two options for creating reactants are, I can create a structure that looks like this with the two blue balls, or I can create a structure that looks like this with the two black balls. And what we'll discover then is if we make another structure, the two black balls like this, what we can see then is we can see that two blue balls and four black balls can transform and react or yield to produce or decompose into these products over here. We haven't lost any of the blue balls and we haven't lost any of the black balls. We've just changed the way we've reacted them and changed their chemical nature into something that looks like this, which was our NO2 or our nitrogen dioxide. And so this is how balancing chemical equations works. Instead, we had previously said that this was the reaction that existed. We had said when we wrote our skeleton equation that this was the reaction. Clearly this doesn't work because it breaks one of the fundamental laws of nature which is the law of conservation of matter, which means that everything that we start with needs to be conserved until the end of whatever reaction is happening. So we can now see that this is what actually needs to happen. We need two O2s and one N2 to eventually produce two nitrogen dioxides. And I'll throw that balanced chemical equation up on your screen right now. That is how balancing chemical equations works. And that's why it works as well. Hopefully this was helpful to you. Um, I know this visual trick is sometimes a little bit nicer. I uh, hope you enjoyed this little view of my desk instead of my face. And I hope you have a great rest of your day.